in this world today, we have a series of potential futures, which is what I wanted to talk about. And uh, I did a video a while back. I called it on free will, AI, and artificial uh, and um, artificial intelligence, free will, and sentience. And that's what I wanted to talk about a little bit today. What sentience is, what the computer world is presenting us with. Because I, I was watching that Havel Noah, or whatever his name was, talking about the potential of, of the future and how it's going to be a computerized future, data-driven future. My argument that I made in my previous video was that um, sentience is part and parcel of life. And in, in a nutshell, I'll put this as um, every cell in your body, which is like over, something like trillions of cells in each human body, each individual cell has a, a certain amount of desire built into it as a genetic you know, necessity. Each cell is hungry and thirsty, believe it or not. I mean, they all want water, they all want nutrition and so forth. And your body, your your existence as a human being physically, is a, a conglomeration of all those cells getting what they want. There's a will to uh, live and there's a will, a desire for sustenance and so forth. So that was my point you know when it, as opposed to let's say a computer or even the greatest computers in the world or the entire computer network or the entire world each one of those computers is a silicone based you know binary codes and none of them have any desire none of them have any will i know that oh well somebody's saying they could program desire well I don't know if you really can program true desire like like we have in our cells. Like I said, we we have a, several trillion cells, and each one is hungry. Each one is thirsty. In in a computer, when you shut the computer off, it's off. It doesn't have. Yeah, you could turn it right back on again. It comes back to life, you might say. But it, it, all the while, it's off, and all the while, it's you could store it in a in your compartment over in the next room for six years and then bring it back out again if it it, it plug it in it'll still work so it, it, there's no sentience involved in that it's it's merely a tool something like a screwdriver or a hammer that was my point i made in a long time ago and and i'm not sure that i'm right yeah I, that's my theory about it and on side of that is um another theory that I've had for many years and, and some people who know me have heard this theory before which is the uh, the uber mind as I said you know that is to say that as uh, well I'll tell you the theory that um, the, the, a lot of the people who are afraid you know Arthur C. Clarks and and those kind of people the Isaac Asimov's and the and the uh, the the matrix type people believe that that somehow when you build a complex enough system with uh, processing units and the memory units in a, in a more complex processing unit, they believe that at some point along the way, sentience will form as a sort of a automatic crystal-like form, you know, as I explained. You know, when you get the right ingredients and the right temperature and the right number of processing units together, such as a human brain might have, then somehow this crystalline form will arise as a sentient being. And that's the theory that a lot of people have nowadays about artificial intelligence. They are, they're afraid that that's going to happen in the computer world. Which is the point I argued against. But if that's possible, and I don't know if it is, and, and I argued against it, 
then isn't it also just as possible in some form that there could be another higher form of intellect, a higher consciousness, if you will, that is possible through all human beings being interconnected with the internet. In other words, if we continue to type into our computers day in and day out and on our cell phones and all six, seven billion people on the earth are working in unison on the on this on this internet, then isn't it possible also that the humanity could somehow form into a sentient existence as as a species as a as another higher level of consciousness i mean that's an idea you know that i had a long time ago and i i wrote about it but i lost i put this online a while ago about how the ant hills exist and the ants are all working as one unit even though they seem to be separate little entities of antness there's a queen of course uh, but there's also all these worker ants and all these different ants that have different roles within the anthill and and as survival and existence goes they are one unit as an ant colony and and there seems to be like a a, a larger intelligence that exists within the ant colony than exists just within any individual ant and and maybe something like that could exist to come to come to realization for human beings as a you know internationally we we have all these uh, ability to interpret each other's languages on the computer you know you ever, you get that on the computer um they the you can look up your friend in the philippines and then they have like a per a, a little button you could push and understand what he's saying in Filipino and Chinese or Russian and they all the computer brings everybody together into one language and eventually as it's possible into one uber mind as you will that that if they could it's just as realistic to believe that if a computer can automatically somehow create a sentient reality maybe our whole species could, by the same process, create a sentient reality, which is a higher level of consciousness, which is humanity in general. I mean, I don't imagine if would each one of us know that it existed. I don't know, but uh, this is part of the, the other part of this that I, I I figure into it, and is and it's a little hard to explain. Is this consciousness? this higher level of consciousness already exists maybe potentially without us knowing about it, it could be in another part of the galaxy or it's like an undiscovered reality and and undiscovered realities happen all the time throughout human history you know i explained this in some of my other videos you know like the the concept of pi you know, 3.14, which is the relationship of a radius to a circumference. That was something that, that for like 100,000 years, didn't, human beings had no understanding of until like Pythagoras or whoever it was back in ancient Greece, about 600 BC, started playing around with numbers and said, hmm, this is a repeating decimal. This just goes on to, uh, forever. You know, and the relationship of a radius to a circumference. And all of a sudden he realized that, and that brought about the whole concept of trigonometry and the ability to build large structures, especially two-dimensional structures, that we could figure out the mathematics for in advance of building. And that was something that just was out there already, but the Pythagoras, through his, he came along to a certain point where he was able to, to get to that understanding, you know, he learned enough and there was enough pre-knowledge already there where he could come to that understanding that something like pi existed. And, and so the question is, did pi, ex is, a, is a tree fall in the forest, does it make a sound? Did pi already exist before Pythagoras discovered it? I say yes, in a way. 
there's a potential for things that we don't understand that exist in the universe but we just haven't gotten the intellectual or cultural ability to understand them yet and that's exactly what I'm talking about here there there may be a higher level of consciousness that we have that's available to us so that being said and I and I just lost my thought on this but that being said we are um potentially at the advent of this and uh, it, it could be our salvation who knows but all right thank you